Hello, my dear and beloved students. At the very onset, I would like to welcome you all to my today's class on pharma marketing management, which is a subject in the final year elective for B Farm under Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Avijit Majumdar, acting as professor and director of Noida Institute of Engineering and Technology Pharmacy Institute, Greater Noida. Now, before I start the today's lecture, let me give you a brief introduction of this particular subject. Many of you have a dream to pursue your career in management in the long run. And as we know that after completing your graduation, there are various career avenues which are open before you and it is a very right time for you to select an appropriate one. So, for the students in general and for those students who want to pursue their career in marketing or management in general in the long run, this subject is having of utmost importance. Now, this subject was framed keeping in mind the various aspects of management. Then we will be studying across what basically is marketing management, what are the various duties, roles and responsibilities which one has to play as a marketing manager in a pharmaceutical industry. This is the main key theme of this particular subject. Now, before I go into the details, let us first concentrate on what is management. As we know that we live in a society, we cannot survive alone. We have to take the help of our friends, we have to take the help of our relatives, we have to take the help of our family members, we have to take the help of our colleagues. Question is why? The reason is all work cannot be done alone. So, it is the joint effort, a cumulative effort of all of us which makes a work very easy and this leads to the concept of what we are calling as management. So, every individual working in group what he cannot achieve individually is the fundamental concept of management. In fact, if you are doing a piece of work alone, it is not management. But say for example, if the same work has been assigned to a group of people in batches and when they are carrying out that piece of work, we are calling that as management. Therefore, management is an essential part of group activity. Do not get confused that management is only restricted to corporate sector, no. Management starts from your home. You will be surprised to know that your mother is the first manager whom you are seeing in the day to day life. Question is why? It is because your mother is running the entire family, taking the help of your father, taking your help, taking the help of your siblings, taking the help of other family members taking the help of other people in the society. Say for example, a person who is distributing milk in your house, 
a person who is delivering the groceries to your house, a person who is distributing the newspaper in the morning to your house, all these are cumulatively your mom is taking care of whenever she is running the family. So, it starts from the grass root level in the family itself. Whenever you are playing in a sports ground, whether you are playing football, whether you are playing cricket, whether you are playing any basketball, any activity, what you are doing is you are distributing yourself into two groups and each group is having a number of individual members who has to play their role. So, whenever you are coming out of your house in the playground, that also is management. Management also exists whenever you are going to a corporate sector, whether you are joining as a level of the supervisors then also you are managing a group of daily wages for your daily production schedule. So, management is whatever you do in group is basically what we call here as management. You will be very astonished to know that the government is also a part of this management because they are having different divisions, each divisions are handled over or taken care of by individual people who is the in charge of that particular department and he is delegating, he is subdividing the work amongst various members of the group, so that the work runs smoothly. So, Basically, management is an universal process, management is an universal process, because it lies in home, it lies in playground, it lies in the colleges where you are studying, it lies in the organization where you are working, it lies in the government which is running the country. So, management is basically an universal process. So, to make this process more interesting, let us define what the term management is. See, I have written the work management. If I ask you, can you define management? Just by looking at this word management, it will be easier for you to define what management is. Let us see how to define. See this work, this very word management I have segregated into three parts. One is manage, other one is men and other the single alphabet which is remaining is T. So, this if you focus on this word, you will get the definition of management. Let us see how. Management is nothing but managing men tactfully to get the work done. Management is managing the men tactfully. managing the men tactfully to get your work done, that is what management is. Therefore, management refers to all the individuals, all persons who are involved in this particular process of getting the work done by others in a tactful way. So, it may be, let us talk of a particular pharmaceutical organization where in the management level starts from the supervisors, it extend across the organization up to the president, 
general manager, managing director and so on. Please remember that all organization is having a structure that of a pyramid. This is called the lower level structure, this is the middle level structure and this is what we are called as the top level structure. So, there are three structures as such lower, middle and top. People who are in the lower level we can call them as the supervisors. People who are in the middle level we can call them as the regional managers, the area managers and so on and the people who are in the highest level we will call them as president, managing director etcetera. So, their nomenclature defines to which particular level he or she belongs to. Let us quickly go through some definitions of management as defined by various gurus of management. Mune and Riley defines management as an art of directing and inspiring people. That is, it is a process by which we motivate people to get our work done. Another scientist Harold Kunz defined management as the art of getting things done through and with the people in a formally organized group. This is very important. It is a process by which we get our work done with the help of people who are basically organized depending on their expertise. It is an art of creating an environment in which people can perform and individuals could cooperate for attaining the goals of the organization or attainment of their group goals. That is what I mean to say is the people are segregated according to their expertise in their group and each group is assigned a task which is the goal of the group and all of them collectively try to contribute for the achievement of the goals which has been specified to that particular group. Another scientist of management called F. W. Taylor defines management as an art of knowing what you want to do in the best and cheapest way, what we are calling as optimization of resources. Because in management we are using basically three M's. What are the three M's? Men, money and material. These are the three aims of management. So, you have to make an optimized utilization of all these resources. Another scientist defined management as a force that integrates the main and physical plant into an effective operational unit. Finally, Ruse Moore defines management as a decision making process because whenever you are distributing the people, you are taking a decision. Whenever you are assigning a task to a group of individuals, you are taking a decision. Whenever you are giving certain incentives, some financial reward, it is a decision. So, all work which a management or a manager performs, they involves the process of decision making. Question is, is management a science or is management an art? This is a great question which has comes for a year together. You just try to explore your mind 
to have an idea about whether management is a science or management is an art. Management is a science in the sense that whatever activity we take into consideration, whether it is planning, whether it is decision making, whether it is leadership, whether it is motivation, all work which a manager does, they are on the basis of some scientific models which are validated. They are on the basis of certain models which are validated. Validated means if you repeat the same process, the same type of results will come up. Therefore, management is certainly a science because the fundamental base of management is depending on certain scientific models. So, 100 percent it is a science. So, management assumes that the problem can be approached using a rational, logical, objective and systematic ways and in order to achieve it requires technical, diagnostic, decision making skills and techniques to resolve the problems. Remember that all these are having some, they are all on the basis of certain validated models. That is the reason why management is a science. Question is, is management an art? Yes, it is an art. Why? Because when you will apply which particular skill that depends on the intuition of the manager, that depends on the skills of the manager. Say for example, a manager is trying to give you certain rewards. Now, how much he will pay in financial terms and how much he will pay in non-financial terms that depends on him, that depends on art. There are various types of leadership which particular style will be applied to a group of individual in a particular point of time that depends on the particular situation. So, decisions are made and problem solved using a blend of intuition, experience, instinct and personal insight. These are the four qualities which all managers must have. Intuition experience because experience guides people to take a decision depending on the circumstances and whenever you are taking a decision you have to have a very clear cut communication skill you have to have a very clear cut interpersonal skills you should have see all managerial activities basically are time bound in nature because you have to accomplish the task in an optimum resources within a specified time. Next, so management is both a science as well as an art. This point we have come to the conclusion. Science because it is validated on some scientific models, art because it is the skill of the manager to apply that is the reason why it is an art. So, management is a cumulative of both science and art that, that in fact that is the reason why people from science and art background both can come into this profession. Management is a group activity, management is goal oriented, management is universal in characters, management is needed at all levels. It is not that the lower level does not require management, lower level of an organization 100 percent requires management. It is not that the highest level of an organization when I have taught you that particular pyramidal structure that higher level do not require management, higher level 100 percent require management because it is the managing director vice president, president that they have to take strategic decisions. Next, management is a distinctive process, management is both a science as well as an art, management is a profession. Many people 
they have taken management as their bread and butter. So, management is a profession. Management is intangible. You cannot see. You cannot see a management, but you can feel the process they are applying, the motivational skill they are applying, the leadership they are applying, you can see, you can visualize. So, management is intangible in nature. You can, it is not seen, but it can be felt. Management is dynamic in nature. It changes with the environment. It changes with the situation. You, you, on the basis of the situation, you have to change your management principles or the tools. That is the reason why management is dynamic. Importance of management, in fact, why management is required? Management is required because we need to achieve our group activity. As I have told you individually, you cannot do anything. It is the cumulative effort which help you to achieve a goal. Whenever you are achieving a goal, this optimization of resources, main material money, this is very important. Next is minimum cost to combat competition, because you know in an organization in the market there are a lot of competitors. You have to expend minimum money to overcome those competition, because more you expend, lesser will be your profit. So, the next objective of management is increase in profit. Smooth running of business is another major objective of the management. That is the reason why organization keeps manager. Management involves continuous innovations. Management results in changes and growth. Whenever an organization is growing, whenever there is certain change in the regulatory process, management has to change itself. Management has social benefits, which we are calling as ISR. Institute social responsibilities. That is responsibility towards the society all organization has to bear. Now, the key concept of management are organization, people working together to coordinate their action to achieve a goal. What is goal? Goal is nothing but a desired future conditions that the organization seeks to achieve. And in fact, all management has to do planning, organizing, leading, controlling, and these are the four basic functions which all managers has to do. And whenever they are doing these four functions, they are dealing with people, machinery, raw material, information and finance. These are the five assets which a manager gets. And with these five assets, they are playing a sort of a jugglery game to get the organization goal achieved with the maximum utilization of resources, so that the organization gets maximum profit. Therefore, manager are people who are responsible for supervising the use of organization resources to meet the goals of the organizations. So, management is a process because it is what a manager does. What work manager does? Managers do planning, managers do organizing, he performs the directing function, he recruits people, so he does the staffing function and he keeps the control of the overall situation by comparing the standard and the actual achieved. So, it's the controlling, planning, organizing, directing, staffing and controlling, they are the major functions of a manager. Henry Fayol, a legendary figure in the field of management, when he was a chief executive officer of a large mining company in the later 1800s, he defines that all managers, irrespective of the level where he or she is working, has to perform planning, organizing, leading and controlling. These are the four basic functions which a manager has to do. These are the four basic functions which a manager has to do irrespective of the fact that whether he is at the lower level in the terms of supervisors or he is in the middle level in the form of regional managers or he is in the higher level at the forms of managing directors. But the degree of important changes as the level goes up and down. Next we are coming to the 14 principles of management which Henry Fayol propagates. Division of work 
authority, discipline, unity of command, unity of direction, order, scalar change, centralization, remuneration, interest, equity, stability, initiative and spirit the cops. These are the 14 principles or 14 factors which any organization must have to run smoothly. Let us explain one by one. Division of work. Henry Fayol told that no work can be done alone. The work has to be segregated, distributed as per their expertise, as per their knowledge, as per the skills. Next is authority and responsibility. Now, if you are delegating an individual authority without responsibility, he or she will not be in a position to carry out the work. Because unless he is having the responsibility, he will take decisions at random and the entire pathway will be wrong. On the other hand, if you are giving only responsibility without any authority, then also he or she cannot perform because he does not have the minimum power, power to take a decision, power to purchase, power to move as per his own will to get the work done with optimum utilization of resources. Therefore, you have to give both authority as well as responsibility to a manager to work on. Next is discipline. Henry Fayol considers discipline to mean obedience. The team members must be obedient to their managers or the leaders. Respect for the authority and they should observe the already established rules and regulations. Next is unity of command. Fayol suggests that an individual should receive a command or direction from one individual and not so many individuals at a time because he will lose the priority whom to follow and whom not to follow depending on the time management. That is the reason why Fayol told that there should be, a, if a, if for a particular individual employee, he must receive direction from one supervisor. So, an individual employee should receive orders from one supervisor at a time and that employee should be answerable only to that supervisors. If there are many supervisors giving orders to the employee at a particular point of time, he will not be able to decide which order to be given priority and which order to be carried out later on and this will result in a organizational conflict. Next is the unity of direction. There should be one plan of action for a group of activities which are having a similar objective and there should be one individual, one manager to control them. Say for example, let us talk about an automobile sector where there are scooters and cars. Henry Fayol suggests that there should be a complete separate division for one separate product. That is, for scooters there should be separate and for uh, cars they should be separate. All should give individual interest later on which, and they should think of their general interest in the initial beginning. Remuneration, all people should be equally remunerated and remuneration should be fair to both employees as well as the owner to survive. Next is centralization and decentralization. Supervisors should keep the authority of taking decisions in their own hands while the authority to take daily decision should be kept on to the subordinates. That is day to day decision should be left on to the subordinates and long run decision to be taken care of by the super, sup, superiors. Lastly, the scalar chain, it means each communication should move from top to bottom, reporting should move from bottom to top. A right person should be placed at the right job and a right thing should be placed at the right place is what basically Fayol means for order and all employees should be treated equally and impartially as far as equity is concerned. Next we are coming to stability of the personnel. If a person is staying in an organization for long, belongingness increase and effectivity increases. Finally, initiative it is the duty of the manager to motivate a group of individuals to work for his organization and lastly spirit the corps. It means management should highlight 
the word we rather than I. We should not think. We should think in the broader perspective. A manager should continuously make effort to develop a team spirit among subordinates. To do this, he or she should use the word we instead of I during the conversation with the subordinates. That is, the subordinate should feel if the organization survives, uh, they will be given the credit. With this, I am coming to the end of the lecture of today. Thank you very much for your patient hearing. Hope you enjoyed the lecture today. Thank you.